Listen to me, detective. I never asked for this gift. I don't want to stand at the sink and look out the window at my garden, but I can't. Instead, I'm flung into a dark, rat-infested alley or a field of wheat. I, I want to do the dishes, but I can't. I'm pitched into an aisle of a grocery store and bombarded by fabric softener and laundry detergent and floor wax. My very eyes betray me and, and I have to rely on the sound of water and the chill of the porcelain against my hands to anchor me, to reassure me that I'm in my own home. Things come screaming out of the air and bore into me with such ferocity and such pain. And the other day, I looked here and I saw a dead little boy. This will become the truth if we don't do something. He's alive. Oh, he is so tiny. It looks like really run down, paints peeling, a wallpaper underneath. Broad stripes, and daisies, and, and vines. A little travel clock, it's 410. Still light out. Two windows, like those in old factories. Um, they're about three feet wide, must be seven, eight feet high. All paned with glass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight panes wide. And one, two, three, four, five, Five panes times two makes it ten high. Now, there's a warehouse across the street. Brick. Same windows. Wait. Uh, it's not a warehouse. It's the same building. It's U-shaped. I, I can see off in the distance there, there are train tracks. Uh, lots of train tracks. Passenger train going by. Oh, it's an Amtrak, the kind with the sleeper cars. Nothing else out there. Wait, there is something. There's someone else out here, but, but I can't make them out. I know there's someone standing right here, but I can't see them. It's a spot, a, a big smudged spot. Someone is there, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's obscured. Uh, there's there's something else something something in the corner wait it's bottled gas there's a tag on it nitrix oxide refill uh, a date 10 12 76 something something mm, from cleveland medical dental supply mayfield road cleveland ohio the boy um he, he's handcuffed to a pipe. He's sitting on a pile of blankets and sheets. He looks okay. Oh, detective, this isn't easy for me. Either you act on what I have told you or not. Knowing you as I do, I suspect you will. I know that you won't get 20 miles from here before you start making your phone calls. I know that all you have left is your work. And I know that you eat cereal for supper. I know that you put your gun away on the top shelf of your closet because you're still worried that your son may find it. I know that you do your laundry at the laundromat instead of at home because you want to be around people only you don't like talking to them because they might ask how you are. I know that when I see something, it's true, and, and that I don't have a choice, and if I don't help, another little boy will die in less than two weeks. Now, go away. You want to see something? <laughs> you like it? I found it in the alley behind the Hockenheimer Museum on Pussy Willow and Coolidge. They throwed it away. Well, can't say I blame them. <laughs> I sure wouldn't want no dead duck hanging on my wall while I was trying to eat my liver. 
wonder why it got painted in the first place. Must have been a pet. But why do you suppose that that bear painter feller put an apple in it? Must have been his lunch. Wouldn't surprise me that after he finished his painting, he ate both his subjects. <laughs> Artists, they're famous for starving to death. It seems like they have to die before they're appreciated. Well, that's kind of true of most of us. Kind of sad, though, that that poor painter feller only had a dead duck to paint. Couldn't afford no nude lady, I guess. <laughs> Still and all, he was proud of it. He signed his name. Vaughn, Van, Vander something. Hm. Sounds Puerto Rican. Only they paint fish. Oh well. Somebody will come along like ducks and bite if I wait long enough. Oh, and if the mice don't get to it.